three, two, one. Welcome into the Inside Carolina podcast. I'm your host, Ross Martin, and we have a very special edition of the Inside Carolina podcast presented to you by Johnny T-Shirt and GiantT-Shirt.com. We are joined by UNC football head nutritionist, Kelsey Gomes. What's going on, Kelsey? Hi, Ross. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, and so I wanted to bring on Kelsey to kind of talk about a wide range of things um, from her involvement with, obviously, the football team and what she does with the players, her involvement with strength conditioning and, and different things about gaining weight, adding weight, nutritional advice. So we're going to have a, a pretty cool conversation here, and uh, we'll jump right into it. First, I want to remind everybody to rate, review, and subscribe to the Inside Carolina podcast. That helps us um, be available to you. If you subscribe, you get the podcast every, uh, every time we publish a new one, and then rating and reviewing helps us uh, with the algorithms and everything. So rate, review, and subscribe. All right, Kelsey, let's get into it. So you're obviously a huge part of the football team, and it's a different thing that I don't think a lot of um, maybe fans realize. You know, we, we see the importance of, of Brian Hess and the strength conditioning um, staff, but the nutrition's big. I mean, I always say if you want to lose weight, it starts in the kitchen. If you want to gain weight, it starts in the kitchen, and that's where you come in. You're the nutritionist. So I guess briefly, you know, what is your role at, uh, with UNC – in kind of um, in general terms, and we'll just dive into a bunch of questions I have. Yeah. So um, I guess this is going into my sixth season with Carolina football, so uh, which is awesome. This is a dream job for me. I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. So I grew up in North Carolina, um, went to school at UNCW. I'm a former college athlete. I swam at UNCW for four years and then kind of wanted to get out of the state for a little bit and just kind of do something different. So I did my master's in, in Florida, at Florida State in Tallahassee. Um, so I was down in Florida for a little bit, um, actually worked for the University of Florida for for much champ for three years before I came up here so when this job opened up I was super excited to to be here and to, to kind of come home to North Carolina so um, my role kind of has a lot of um, I guess I have a lot of different roles on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, I'm the director of sports nutrition here. And so um, my main job is football. So I do have some of the other sports, but I'm heavily involved in the daily operations over here at football, anything from feeding our athletes, anything from pre-practice fueling to post-practice fueling to during practice fueling. Um, hydration is another really big thing that we harp on with our guys. So I do a lot of hydration testing with our players and, and coming up with different hydration plans as well. This, this past season, I had about 26 different players that we had certain specific hydration plans for anything from what they needed to consume. Um, you know, two hours prior to the game when they got to the stadium to 20 minutes prior to the game to what we had on the sidelines. Um, and then also what they were doing halftime. So, I mean, it was a pretty involved process as well. And I mean, these guys eat a ton. I, I wish I had kind of our hard facts for you of like mm -hmm. how much we go through on a daily basis. Cause like the amount of fruit that these guys eat, the amount of protein that goes into their meals, um, the amount of carbohydrates that they do, like these guys eat a lot. Yeah. Okay. So let's get to that. I mean, heading into a season, what is your day to day looking like with, with fueling the team? Let's say, you know, preseason camp, obviously there's two to three weeks before the season when you're trying to fine tune their bodies and get them uh, ready for the season. Can you give me kind of a, a glimpse into that day, one day and, and then the life there? Sure. Yeah. So even like, uh, you know, with, with prepping the guys for season, that really actually starts in January. So, you know, we, we yeah. kind of look at that like eight months prior prior to the season. That's kind of our off season. We're recovering um, from the season and then we're, we're really getting going into spring ball so that we can look at kind of how those first two months with the strength and conditioning program is gone. And just anytime we're trying to, guys are changing position. Anytime we're trying to manipulate their body weight, we're kind of looking at body composition as well. That all is kind of within that first three months. So it's not just kind of this like two weeks prior to preseason camp because they've got to be ready to go. But okay, my day... So so let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go okay. to January when, when, when okay. I know the off season training is big, when they're trying to add weight, trying to get that, the mass of, I guess, yes. let's go to then and kind of what that looks like for you. Yeah. So basically our guys will, they'll lift five, days a week and then we'll have conditioning and also like PLPs it's kind of a big thing player led practices that we're doing and so um, even that's kind of what my schedule looks like right now so what we'll do is um, starting at seven 
seven o'clock in the morning um, is when we kind of go down to the indoor right now. And we have everything prepped from the day before to things that guys will take uh, prior to their workouts. We want to make sure they're eating. That's the biggest thing that, you know, you look at first thing in the morning where people can just hop right out of bed and go right into a workout. Well, your body's going to start to break down muscle. So I always tell our guys, you have to feed the muscle to keep the muscle. So we want to make sure they're having something quick, something easy to digest, just some kind of quick carbohydrate. So that can be anything from like Nutrigrain bars to chewy bars to even like a Gatorade Prime or Gatorade Chews. Um, those are just kind of some examples of some easy to digest things that they can do right before a run. And then um, right now, kind of with the different conditions due to due to COVID and everything, we actually have individualized water bottles for the guys. So it has their names on them. They're carrying those around. And so I'm actually kind of following the guys around during the run just to make sure they're hydrating and really encouraging in between any type of breaks that they have that they're, they're really drinking. So, um, you know, then after that, we're doing a lot with with breakfast. So we have a training table and a dining facility here at Keenan. So I work really closely with a lot of our staff members over here at Rocky Top is our uh, dining facility caterers mm -hmm. that we use. And so anytime guys need to gain weight, I'm going to look at what they're ordering for their breakfast in the morning. So if they're just getting one breakfast sandwich, that's not going to be enough. That may only be like a 300 calorie breakfast in the morning where some of these guys were that are burning upwards of five, 6,000 calories, even when we get up into Keenan. Camp. like some of these guys are between seven and eight, depending on their metabolisms, um, that I need to make sure that they're eating enough because all of this weight that we're putting on in the, in the off season and building their strength, building their muscle mass up, um, that I don't want them to lose that going into camp. Um, so a lot of education goes into this with the guys. I'll meet with guys one-on-one -on -one, um, and kind of go through what their days are. And so it's not that I want to change everything completely, but I want to find easy ways that I can kind of sneak calories in or make sure that they're getting enough protein. So just kind of in, in general, when I'm looking at guys, like they're like roughly closer to like one gram per pound per day. So you look at somebody that's like a 300 pound lineman, like that guy may need upwards of 300 grams of protein per day. And if he's only doing like a small breakfast sandwich with, you know, that may only have like three eggs on it, that's only going to be about 21 grams of protein for his meal where he may need closer to like 50 grams, like per meal that he's, um, that he's doing. So that's something that we'll look at and then try to really make sure just with their schedules with going to class. Um, Coach has like has this saying that he says, I, you should have more snacks in your backpack than books. Kidding, <laughs> but he's serious. Yeah, I gotcha. We always try to make sure that we're loading these guys up um, going to class. So right now with us, like t um, only my staff is allowed to like touch anything in, in the, um, when it comes to like nutrition, everything's prepackaged right now, but we have, um, they're kind of like lunch bags right now that we're giving to the guys. And so then we have gloves on and guys are kind of going down the line of what they want, whether it's beef jerky or nuts or an extra protein shake or Greek yogurt with some granola in it. And so we're putting all of that stuff in a bag for them to take with them. Cause that's what we're really trying to do is just maximize like their calories. Cause if you look at somebody that needs 5,000 calories and if they're only eating three meals a day and not these snacks in between, that's, you know, what, close to a 1,500 calorie meal. That's a lot to eat um, in one meal. Yeah, and so uh, obviously a big part of this is, is education because they have some independence on, on how what they eat if they're not at the, at the facility and, and what they're eating for breakfast, lunch, and dinner when they are at the facility. I, how do you educate these players? I guess freshmen is obviously big, establishing those practices, establishing those kind of habits. Can you kind of go briefly into how you educate the players on nutrition and what they need to do? Definitely. So when they first get here, so I guess I'll just start with our freshmen right away. So when our freshmen first get here, they all go through like a nutrition 101 meeting with me. So we kind of go through the basics with them. What's a carbohydrate? What's a protein? What's a fat? And kind of making sure that they have those things on their plate. Right now we're, we're not doing buffet style, but whenever um, we were doing that kind of in the spring, I would walk down the line with them. So that's a big thing that I usually will do with our players. And we're so fortunate to have a dining facility here in Keenan football that um, I call it live plate coaching. So I'm, I'm kind of that type of coach to them that on the nutrition side of things. And so I'll look at their plates and, and kind of go down the line with them and just kind of educate them on what's going to be the best source. So um, some things that I kind of learned like throughout the just like small sayings that I've kind of picked up, like less legs is best for protein. So when you're thinking of less legs, like fish, no legs, chicken and turkeys, two legs, cows and pigs, four legs. So what's going to be kind of your leaner option okay. for some guys that may want to lean out. Um, so looking at the option on the line, we, um, we kind of go through, we always have kind of a, 
a leaner option and then a heavier option. So if I have, um, you know, a, a baked salmon on the line, like I may have something like a sirloin steak. Not that that's any, that they're, they're both like lean options, but the fish may have a little bit less calories than the, um, yeah. than, the than the steak. And so that way they can check or, um, or choose, still have the autonomy to choose, but basically that our guys can kind of eat with what are congruent with their goals. So if they are trying to gain weight, if they are trying to lose weight, um, and we do plate examples as well and so one thing that we'll do is actually have like plate displays of what a lean plate may look like and what a gain plate may look like and so it's again gotcha. that visual education with them one thing that we did in the spring that i thought was awesome is um that we actually uh, our nutrition staff is at every single meal with the guys and so the guys actually would go down the line with us and would have to show us their plates so we always made sure that they had some carbohydrates a protein and um we call it putting three colors on your plate, but either a fruit or a vegetable, just to kind of make sure that they had all three components on their plate. And so it worked like really well. So guys actually like started to learn and kind of take in a lot more of what actually is a protein, what actually is a carbohydrate and foods that kind of feel good um, to them and worked well with them. Awesome. Um, yeah, it's critical. So when, um, let's kind of go into maybe some specific foods that Let's say a player is trying to bulk up in, in January and February, add weight, maybe an incoming freshman. You know, we heard that Kedrick Bingley Jones gained like 20 pounds within like two, two months or so. You know, what does that, what, is it, what does a week look like in terms of the types of foods that you really encourage them to eat and maybe the, the amount they're eating per day in terms of maybe like four or five meals? You know, we always heard about Tyler Hansbro would wake up and eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches like two times during the night just to keep adding calories and protein. So maybe some examples of that, of, of a bulking player. Um, yeah. 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 So um, I guess one thing is I'm always going to make sure they have enough protein. So in the morning, like eggs is just such an easy thing to do first thing in the morning. So we may do like, um, you know, I may make sure that these guys have at least six eggs on their plate and then looking at doing a like breakfast potatoes. So when I'm looking at their plates too, I always look to kind of see that they have all three of those components, the, the carbohydrate, the protein and the fruits and vegetables. We call them three-step meals. Um, yep. But I love to see that like half their plate has carbohydrates on it. So whether that comes from fruit and potatoes, and then the other side may be protein on it. Um, some foods that are also really good that I love like having like get, having giving to our players are going to be oatmeal. Um, rice is another really good bulking thing, just be a bulking food, just because um, it digests really easily because we want to, again, if somebody needs to eat upwards of 6,000 calories, it's hard like to eat those really like heavy, heavy meals and want to eat again in two hours. And so, you know, I don't want to take that away from players where they, it takes the enjoyment out of food um, because they do have to fuel and they do have to eat so much. So we do make a lot of our PB and J's over here um, as well. And so that may be something that I'm sending them home with two peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, maybe some oatmeal and a protein shake to make sure that they're also eating something before they go to bed at nighttime. Um, but always like on their plates, it's got it for some of our guys that are gaining weight, like lunch may look like half their plate and rice and then looking at kind of a lean, like two, two chicken breasts um, and then also um, making sure that they've got some vegetables on there and possibly a fruit cup. I also will look at liquid calories sometimes if they can um, drink milk, chocolate milk is an easy addition to three meals a day. So I'm kind okay. of looking at overall calories where I can try to fit in, um, you know, an, an extra thousand to 1500 calories a day in them. So whether that's, um, you know, a glass of milk, a PB and J is about 200 calories. So if I know that I can get them to eat, you know, two or three of those, that's an easy 600 calories. And then if I can add a protein shake here and there, um, depending on whether it's, a, um, you know, some of our Gatorade shakes are upwards of 360 calories that I can give them to add. So I can make sure that that's something that they're doing after their workout as well. Um, and then making sure that they're eating dinner pretty much within two hours after that workout. So it's all about the timing. So it's not always about like the what, but it's also about kind of the timing of that as okay. well. So making sure that they um, are having a protein shake, eating a meal within an hour after that, taking a snack with them that they have to go to tutoring. And then also at night before they go to bed, just making sure that they have some source of 
protein, having about uh, 40 grams in research, they've showed that having 40 grams of protein before you go to bed at night actually helps prevent muscle breakdown while you're sleeping. It's also when a lot of your um, hormones peak. So your human growth hormone actually peaks while you're sleeping at night. And hmm. so this will help like prevent muscle breakdown as well. So since a lot of that recovery happens, we'll make sure that they're taking things home. Right now, a big thing, like our guys are really into cherry juice. And so we're having okay. them take that before they go to bed that helps with muscle soreness, especially with these increased workouts and um, the amount of workouts that they're doing daily with a run in the morning and a lift in the afternoon. Like, um, like we're really kind of pressing that to make sure that they're getting enough um, of, of anti-inflammatory foods in their diets. Gotcha. Okay. So two questions on that. So with the rice and potatoes and kind of those bulky carbs, pastas, Yep. You know, is that just kind of filler or is that just giving them energy? Because I mean, I've always told, you know, carbs is bad. What, you know, carbs are bad. What's the benefit of, of bulking up on potatoes and rice and, and pastas and things if you're trying to gain weight? Yeah. So carbohydrates are your body's preferred source of energy. So that's what your body is actually utilizing when you're running. That's what you're using when you're, um, when you're working out. Um, that's what your body like will store for later. So when we use the term muscle glycogen, um, that's what our players are often like using. You store, you store carbohydrates in your muscles and your liver. And so those are going to be again, like your main energy sources. So as they are kind of bulking on some of these carbohydrates, they digest really quickly. So then they're, they're getting enough, like while they're eating their meals. So I'm looking at that. So that way, again, it's not something that's super heavy um, that will take a lot longer to digest because protein and fat take a lot longer to digest. So that's why too, um, you don't want just um, like, if you were going to run like, a, uh, I don't know, if you were going to go into a two hour practice, you don't want you know, 20 pieces of bacon right before you're going to go into a workout because that's also not going to, you're going to kind of get these like, uh, I don't know, your stomach's just going to hurt kind of that. Just yeah, yeah, I got you. A lot of blood flow is going to your working muscles during a workout. It's not going to your stomach for digestion. And so that's where like, since carbohydrates digest so quickly, I can feel those like frequently throughout the day. So, you know, with guys that are, are working out a ton, if we look at, um, you know, a 300 pound lineman, they may need upwards of a thousand grams of carbohydrates in a day. And so that's where, again, like the majority of some of their um, food is going to come from. Gotcha. Okay. And then protein. Um, let's get some examples of the proteins you like, and maybe some stuff that's maybe more accessible. Like I, I can't eat salmon every day. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not rolling in it like, like, uh, some people are. So yeah. what are some, what are some of your favorite forms of protein and maybe some different ways that you like to present them cook wise and things like that? Yeah. So, um, one thing that we've actually been doing recently, like uh, our guys really love roasted chicken nuggets right now. So we've been kind of baking them and doing like roasted nuggets in the oven. Um, burritos are really another really easy way to, for some of our, um, you know, weekend guys or guys that need like a little bit more calories. Like we can do burrito bowls. So that way I get like actually rice and beans, which together is a, is a complete protein and then, um, shredded chicken. So an, it's kind of another version of chicken, but at least it's just kind mm -hmm. of in a different way that we can present it to them. Um, some guys are still like, I get, I'm still going to get guys that eat chicken tenders and that's just a way to get protein, um, into them. So I don't, um, always encourage all kinds of fried food all the time just because it's more pro-inflammatory but again like kind of working on guys um to maybe decrease the amount that they're doing like we do bake our chicken tenders so it is they're breaded but they're baked um we will do steak our guys love steak um and so we will actually do like steak like we um we'll do that at lunch sometimes on a salad or just like completely separate so that's mm -hmm. another version of a of a protein um shrimp our guys actually like shrimp a lot too so we can either do a grilled shrimp or a popcorn shrimp um so again you'll kind of get some of the breading on it but um but that's okay. It's just, again, like trying to find different ways that we can actually get some protein in them. What's your thoughts on pork? Pork. We actually have a lot of guys on our team that do not eat pork right now. So I don't have it here a ton. We, we will do pork chops and stuff, but whenever we have pork, I just have to make sure that I have a chicken um, option because some guys on the team are not pork and red meat eaters. Um, so it's, again, it's going to kind of be one of those things that pork has a little bit more saturated fat in it. So going yeah. back to that term, like less legs is best. Um, we do, our, our team kind of eats more, I guess, on the side of like fish and steak if they're, and, and chicken are kind of our main proteins that we eat a lot of, and eggs. 
What's your opinion on when Jim Harbaugh, the coach of Michigan, said chicken is a nervous bird and we, we shouldn't be eating it? It's hard to cut out chicken, though. Like, <laughs> it know, is just, just it's hard. <laughs> it's such so, a funny quote. Um, <laughs> so we still eat chicken a lot over here. That was so funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, but my thing is, is that if you're going to cut out chicken, then what's the alternative? Because there's yeah, some yeah. people that like will not eat red meat or pork. And then some people just really don't like um, fish. So it's like, okay, okay but what's the alternative? <laughs> yeah, um, so it's so easy. Yeah. I mean, ch chickens everywhere. Um, I can't feed right, our guys tofu. Like there's no way. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, we're going to take a quick break and talk about Giant T-Shirt. When we get back, I'm going to um, ask Kelsey here more about in-season stuff, uh, you know, recovery during the season, and then we'll get into some uh, advice for, for the average guy at home, guy or gal at home trying to lose or gain weight, and, and some other ideas for uh, best nutritional practices. But first, Giant T-Shirt and GiantT-Shirt.com. They're our loyal podcast sponsors right on Franklin Street and in Chapel Hill. Johnny T-shirt and giant t-shirt.com. The best place to get all your UNC stuff, all your gear, all your hats, sweatshirts. Head to the local uh, shop, Johnny T-shirt.com. You want to support our local businesses. You know, just talk about it, be about it, reach out to your local shops that are, you know are locally owned. Giant T-shirt has great customer service. They're right there. Their headquarters are in um, the warehouse is in Hillsborough, North Carolina, and they're right on Franklin Street. And if you're an inside Carolina subscriber, you can use the 10% off discount code found on the premium football and basketball message boards, Johnny T-shirt and giant t-shirt.com. We appreciate what they do for us and it helps us bring all these great podcasts to you. All right. How was that read, Kelsey? Was that good? That was good. That's good. <laughs> that's do it good. three times a week. All right. So let's get into it uh, a little more here. All right. So we did kind of bulking. Um, let's do some cutting when a player, you know, wants to cut weight, you know, maybe wants to become, maybe you get like a, a big offensive guard who you really need to slim down to be more mobile, or maybe a, a running back who wants to become, you know, a little slider to, to, to get outside and catch passes, you know, what goes into cutting weight and what's your advice and, and kind of practice and plans for that? Yeah. So first I'm going to sit down with athlete just to kind of, again, see what he's currently doing. Um, it's not that I am against sugar or anything like that because your body does need sugar and carbohydrates like as you're working out, but I'm going to look at more of like the timing of when they're doing things. So if it's a kid that, you know, I know that likes sour patch kids, like that may just be something that I need to do like more around like his workout time versus him eating a whole pack of those at nighttime. So that's like kind of my first step just to kind of look at what he's doing. Um, and it may be, um, you know, also, again, like I said, kind of going into the timing of things with how long he's going in between meals. So if he's eating breakfast at 8 a.m. in the morning and then is not eating because he until, you know, three o'clock in the afternoon because he has class and then he has the, the first lift group um, and he's not eating his lunch until three, that's a really long time to go without eating anything. Um, and so again, like I said, like I always say, you have to feed the muscles to keep the muscles. So a lot of times that's the first thing that sometimes guys or sometimes athletes in general may go to is, um, okay, I'm not going to, I'm just not going to eat, but that's actually kind of being counterproductive to what we're trying to do. Um, and your body kind of goes into the starvation mode where when you do eat, you almost will likely binge eat or overeat mm -hmm. later because your body's telling you that you need those calories and, and you do as you're working out so much. Um, but your body's going to store them because it won't know it's going to say, well, he's not really going to feed me until three o'clock the next day. So I need to burn these more at a, at a slower rate. Um, so I feel like the timing and kind of the, what they're doing are the first things that I'll do to evaluate. And then I'm going to look at foods that are going to promote fullness. So that may be for somebody right. that if we're trying to try, trying to drop weight on somebody that may be looking at, okay, their breakfast in the morning. Um, I'm not going to take out carbohydrates completely, but again, it's going to be more timing around their workout. So their breakfast may be more, um, it may be more eggs and possibly like a smoothie in the morning. So things that may, may make them feel a little bit full. Then again, more full. Then I'm going to again, look at kind of the next time that I want them to eat that I may actually portion out like the nuts for them or give them, um, nuts are going to be a really great thing. Uh, great healthy fat that 
satiates them, promotes fullness, um, or look at something like beef jerky. Um, I will look at different, um, different protein bars as well. Like I usually look for something that may have like a two to one carb to protein ratio or something that is more of like a one to one carb or one to one carb to protein ratio so that, um, you're getting those carbohydrates for energy, but you're also getting the protein for fullness. So that's something that my staff and I have kind of evaluated this year with changing some of the options that we've actually um, had, like our options that we've had our players be able to take. Um, then a lot of times I'm going to look at their lunch. So again, if this is around a workout time, it may be something like um, double chicken for some of these guys. Like again, just kind of making sure they're getting enough chicken and then looking at a good amount of fruits and vegetables with that. And then possibly um, still like white rice or potatoes, but I'm going to look at the portion of that. So it may not be as big as half of your plate and maybe something that's like a fistful um, right before. Um, if it's somebody that doesn't, again, want to give up pizza, I'm not going to tell them that they have to completely take that out because then I've already changed kind of their breakfast and lunch. And if that's something that makes them happy, then, okay, we'll do that. But it may be something that we just may only have you do like twice a week or something like that, just kind of limiting things like that. So, um, I'll look at the amount of fried food that they're doing as well. So it's another thing that I'm kind of looking at or, and evaluating how much fried stuff is in their diet as well. And maybe given them some options. So um, I always have like handouts and stuff for them. If I know that they're going to go to Chipotle, I'll kind of write out what I want them to get from Chipotle. That's just maybe like a leaner option for them to choose or if they're going to go to Outback or if they're going to go to Buns or um, you know, something like that on Franklin Street. I'll have different options because I know a lot of them, it's tough with their schedule to cook all the time um, mm -hmm. until they get off campus, especially if it's a freshman in, in the dorms right now. So again, lots of education and just lots of follow up with them. I'm really lucky that I do get to eat in here three times a day with them. So I see them a lot and then I'll see them pre and post workout. We use different, um, kind of, uh, supplement snacks like for, for their meals as well. Um, we use a super starch for the guys like going into a workout so that they get a slow release carbohydrate into their workouts. And then we mix that with some protein so that they have an intra work, uh, intra protein workout source. Um, and that's been huge for us just kind of having that so that the guys can basically, uh, it sustains them through a workout, helps with endurance, prevents fatigue. Um, and that's been awesome, um, for our players. And that's something that we also do like at halftime and it's been huge for us. What, what's a slow release uh, carbohydrate? Yeah, so you have, yeah, so it's we call it a it's called super starch. It's it's you you okay. can, it's the brand that we use. Um, and oh, it's, okay. it's actually a food source, and so what it does is um, you have the difference between like a high glycemic and a low glycemic carbohydrate. A high glycemic carb is going to be something like Gatorade. It spikes, it digests yeah. really quickly and it has a purpose. And then you have a lower glycemic carbohydrate or a super starch um, is kind of an example of that, that basically is a slow release carbohydrate. So it's, it stays in your body a lot longer and kind of helps mobilize fat as an energy source. So it basically okay. helps um, with going in. So it's something that we do at the 20, 20 minute mark right before the game starts and also something at halftime. So it's helped our guys really sustain their energy um, throughout the game because there's so much that of course like goes into the game and our pregame meals are three and a half hours before the game starts. So guys will eat their big meal then and then with yep. nerves, anxiety, um, remembering plays, remember where they need to be. Like that's kind of my role also on game days is, is, taking the thought of that out of it so but that's been something that we've also done like um with some of our weight loss guys with doing like you can has been a big um i guess supplement for that to help with satiation okay great um i'm sure with like losing weight i mean it's a challenge i mean everyone has trouble losing weight and like you know they eat they've been eating the same way in high school like for for four years and they have to all of a sudden try to lose you know 20 pounds you know over the course of a couple of months i mean i imagine it's a bunch of habits it's a bunch of education and it's cutting out i mean cutting out sugars i've heard it i mean that's obviously like the big thing and then probably a lot of fried foods and yep. fast foods i mean is there anything else that because it's got to be a challenge for a lot of guys I and mean, i've seen that with yeah. the, covering the team for the last six years yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. I, um, you know, and I, I, it's, 
it's hard like as a dietitian because I feel like all food can fit somewhere and you know mm -hmm. I never want to take favorite foods away from them or if that's something that was brought up in in their home life and like their mom's mac and cheese is their favorite thing like I don't want to say mm -hmm. like you can't ever have mac and cheese or say that you can't ever have like a cookie ever again and um, or anything like that but it's all like I said it's kind of all about I'll look at the timing of things and trying to find ways that they can still incorporate that into it where they don't have to feel like they're cutting everything out because that also doesn't work um, and and diets just don't work like well like that because if you restrict somebody for um, a long period of time then they're just gonna crave it even more than what's gonna happen they're almost gonna over they're gonna overeat it later so of course I, I never want to do that with them but just trying to find ways that we can still incorporate that but by making small changes to whether it is cutting out fried food instead of doing it seven days a week maybe we're only doing it three days a week or um, sure. is there something that we can do if, if Sour Patch Kids are your favorite thing or Twizzlers like can we do those more like pre work workout like when you're going into a workout because it is like a high glycemic carb it's it's energy yeah. um, that we can do those types of things but then by changing things by adding more fruits and vegetables and educating them on why because I think that's the biggest thing that guys want to know is why why is this important and and that was I remember something that coach Brown told me in my first meeting with them that um, in um, in December of 2018 like when I met with him and I was like well we have um, you know, a lot of guys that are low in vitamin D and I just always can't get them to take it because they're not always compliant. How do you want me to report to you compliance? And he was like, Kelsey, that's your job. Like you have <laughs> to make them want to take it. You have yeah. to tell them the why, like that's on you. And so that really stuck with me that I'm like, you're absolutely right. I need to show them that, you know, this is, this is why this is going to help you. This is how this is going to impact your performance. This is, this is, why like what it takes to do like if you really have dreams and aspirations of going to the NFL this is how this nutrition is going to help you mm -hmm. awesome yeah I, so I mean I, I, you're a, you're a college swimmer so I'm assuming you swam most of your life I swam as well and I remember kids would be eating like sugary stuff before like in the tents during like the before city meets and stuff and I was always like man should you be eating this type of sugar and you see Marshawn Lynch eating Skittles on the yeah. sidelines so it's funny seeing like how like sweets and sugars can be used to enhance performance before yeah. big uh, events and stuff. Um, all right. That was my swimming uh, tidbit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, um, I think that that's great. I mean, I think it's, it's a, a great insight because again, it's yeah. something that it's all, it's quick digesting sugar. Yeah. So it, it helps. It just kind of gives you that extra like kick like right away. Um, and so we do a combination of two of those things. Like you want the high glycemic carbs and those have a purpose. And then we also have kind of our, our superstar arches or our lower glycemic that lasts a little bit longer that also can have a purpose in this. So really yeah. like when we go in at halftime, you know, we're looking at, at doing like not only like maybe another dose of you can if guys will take it, but there are still like a lot of our uh, like chews and um, yeah, yeah. Kind of love or, or fruit snacks that some guys will do just to kind of, again, top off those stores so that they're ready to go the third and fourth quarter. And, you know, I think what we did this year, were you saw a lot of our games this year where we came from behind and yeah. came back and we had energy going into the third and fourth quarter. And, and that goes into guys being compliant and, and kind of knowing what works for them. So everything I tell our guys that we do preseason and during camp, this is all practice for game days because we never want to try anything new on game days. I, you want to know how you're going to feel. You want to know what you're going to eat. I, I, need to know like what you want like in your locker um because again like these are, are things that you know work for you and that you're relying on me to be able to provide like it's funny like as as i think of like other former players like um Bug Howard would only eat grapes at halftime. So every single time we went to a hotel, I had to get a huge carton of grapes and bring those with me to the game to give to Bug. Um, Mac Holland somehow would stomach a Hershey's chocolate milk. I, <laughs> that was like all he was. So, I mean, there's, there's mm -hmm. certain things, but um, you know, that some of these players that I just kind of remember do. That's, that's funny. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say here? Okay, yeah, so game day, let's get into the season here briefly. I don't want to hold you too much longer, but let's look at game day. You mentioned they eat three and a half hours before the game. I think basketball is similar, and they do like four hours before the game. Yeah. What does a meal look like for them? You know, you have the 12 o'clock kickoffs, the 3.30 kickoffs, you have the nighttime kickoffs. There's a lot of different variables in play here. Let's yeah. go through what you want them to eat during the day kind of based on the game time, and then um, 
and then we'll get into recovery and, and you've already mentioned kind of the snacks and stuff during the game yeah so um like you said i have four different menus for different times like when we have kickoff so i have like an early kickoff menu i have a late kickoff menu and i have okay. kind of our afternoon um kickoff menu so um as i'm kind of looking at i guess our, our first two games are later so i'll go through like kind of a late day just kind of a longer day of what we do so our guys love omelets so that's they love made to order things I think mm -hmm. all athletes love that. Um, men's basketball is like that as well. Like they just love made to order things. So our guys will get up in the morning and um, they'll come downstairs. It's kind of a free flowing breakfast. So we'll not only have a buffet, but we'll also have omelets. So um, guys will make those, they'll sit down and eat. They can also get from the buffet line. So I'm, I'm, I, everyone always jokes that they're like on game day, Kelsey, I never see you eat. And it's like, because well, I usually eat after like the players. So after like the meals are done, because I'm going around and kind of evaluating how much they are eating and taking note of that. So that if I know it's somebody that I know that eats a lot at breakfast in the morning, but may not eat a lot at pregame, then I have to make sure I have stuff for him at the, at the stadium that he'll eat. But um, we'll have things like potatoes. We will have bacon. Um, we'll have turkey bacon for our non pork eaters, lots of fruit, um, cereals. So some of, again, these like easy to digest carbohydrates, um, fruit, um, we'll have, um, eggs is a big thing. Like we, uh, I do specify that we want real, real eggs. Like I don't really want liquid eggs or powdered eggs. So I do make sure that those are, are real eggs. Cause you can taste a difference of them. Our players can taste a difference. Um, and then after that, they usually go through to meetings or a walkthrough. And then when we have a later game, usually what I'll do is I'll do giant subs for them um, around lunchtime. So I'll do like a giant sub with double meat. And then we'll have like the, you know, like the thank you plastic bags. So we'll put those in it. And then every guy I make take two waters and a Gatorade. So the exactly. strength staff is usually helping me do that because hydration is going to be such a big thing. So we're promoting that from first thing in the morning. When the guys get down to breakfast in the morning, they also will see that I have have um, electrolytes, um, different types of electrolytes on all of our tables. Um, and so guys know like um, what our like low electrolytes are for guys that may not sweat a ton, our medium and then our high um, content electrolytes. So those will all be on the tables. Um, in addition to that, at all their place settings, they all have, um, we do a green shot and a turmeric shot. Um, okay. So we'll do those to uh, not only like help with recovery, we do this the night before too, but just as a way to kind of get their greens in the turmeric, just again, like with some inflammation. Um, and then they all take their pills in the morning too. So this is like a fish oil, a multivitamin, um, a vitamin C. And so we, we all make those like pill packets for them and a magnesium. Um, then again, once we, um, kind of go through lunch, I'm getting ready for pregame meal. So that's again, when I'm kind of replenishing the electrolytes, um, on all the tables and we usually will do, um, we had, since we had two pescatarians last year on the team. So those are our only, they only eat fish. Like we do have actually salmon on our pregame meal. So we would have salmon, we have grilled chicken, and then we actually have steak, one that's a medium well and a well done. And okay. then um, we'll have mashed potatoes. Um, we have pasta. We have two types of pasta. Um, some guys really like bow tie and some like penne. So I actually have both types of pasta. And then we have like a red pasta sauce. So again, kind of looking at those easy to digest carbohydrates. Um, we'll have green beans on there. Fruit is another, our guys are pretty big fruit eaters. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll always have fruit. Um, and then we have white rice as well. So again, just so that they can choose and they can have different options um, to choose. And then we'll, of course we'll have bread and then water and Gatorade at every station too. So um, awesome. So yeah, but, that's great. Yeah. And then so uh, quickly recovery, you know, after a big workout, What's kind of what's that looking like? I know there's gonna be a meal, but you know the the, the shakes. Do y'all make those in house? Do you have like just shakes you give them out of a, a bottle? Like how's that work? And after the game too, I'm sure whenever you have a, a lot of, of working out, what's that? Yeah. Look like? So um, after a game and after workouts right now, so we um, are doing, we call them RTDs or ready to drink. Um, so we have to do everything packaged right now um, just because we can't blend any smoothies or anything like that. And so we do, okay. um, I do pack those on our equipment truck. So we bring those with us. We ice them down so that the players want a protein shake after, uh, after the game, before we get back on the plane or before like they're leaving the stadium. I always have 
have that with them. Um, but right now what we'll do, we have different types of protein shakes. So, um, we use Gatorade shakes, um, and muscle milk shakes. And then we also use core power shakes. So we have kind of different options. Um, okay. and that's only just because like, um, not all of our guys can stomach lactose. Um, some have to be lactose free options. And so, uh, we'll put those out on a counter right now and then as guys are kind of going through after we've kind of educated them um on which are going to be like our lean out shakes which ones are going to be our maintain and which ones are going to be our gain we kind of have those separated out on the counter and then guys will all um kind of tell us which shake that they want and we'll put them in their bag and they can take them with them awesome all right cool i think that's pretty good in terms of the team stuff um you cover we covered everything from you know, preseason to, to the January, February time to the games in season. So to close out, we're gonna, I'm going to have you switch your mind to the, the everyday guy, the everyday girl, um, maybe in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and the metabolism is low. Maybe they're the weekend warrior uh, working out, you know, two to three times a, a week, little running, you know, nothing extensive. And they're trying to slim down. They're trying to fit into the, the, the pants they wore in high school and college. Um, they they don't, want, don't want to go up a suit size. But they want to, you know, enjoy life. And they're going to be eating some, some sloppy stuff here and there. Let's get a breakdown of, of how you want to may, maybe maintain or lose a little weight for that person with, a, with an ideal, a couple options for breakfast, a couple options for lunch, and a couple yeah. options for dinner that is accessible, that's not, um, you know, not organic farm-raised Alaskan, uh, you know, fresh catch salmon or, or something that's going to break the bank. Yeah. Um, yeah, and let's see what you got there. And uh, I'll, I'll go back and forth with this because this is, is kind of where I'm interested in. Yeah, sure. So um, I always, I, I love like these like easy sayings to remember because I think they stick with people really easily. So like I said, the first thing, like less legs is best. So kind of thinking fish, um, Oh shoot! Um, fish, chicken, um, turkey, and then kind of your cows and pigs. And then when you think of like your carbohydrates, think brown, closer to the ground. So when you're thinking of okay. uh, grains, like you look at kind of like whole grains or things that you want to eat. So things that kind of come from the earth. So whether that's like sweet potatoes, um, brown rice, um, you know, those are going to be really whole wheat pasta. Those are going to be grains that are. Um, um, you know, I just kind of always say brown closer to the ground. They're just going to be like non-processed carbohydrates. Um, and then I kind of say like eat the rainbow. So it's, um, again, trying to incorporate fruits, incorporate vegetables and a good amount of that. So when I said from like a bulking side of things, like when we were looking at like half your plate in carbohydrates, when you look at the other side of that, like half your plate in fruits and vegetables, then half of the other side of your plate, about two thirds of that in protein. And then again, like you always have kind of like your fist with you. So again, kind of going on like a fist of carbohydrates um, is, a, is a good option. So if we're looking at that for breakfast in the morning, like I like omelets are easy and those are also, I don't know if a, a lot of people have that much time in the morning, but that would be like one, if that's something that you have on like Saturdays, like you can make an egg omelet. Um, I love eggs. I'm not, a, I don't really promote egg whites as much because a lot of the protein is in the eggs. And so again, yeah. egg is in the, in the yolk, that's where the protein is. There's two antioxidants, xanthan and xanthine that actually help with eye health. Um, and so yeah. even though like, that's where people say like the cholesterol is, it does not affect your total cholesterol. Um, your body metabolizes that differently. So eggs are awesome. And so I usually will say like, do eggs, throw a bunch of vegetables. Eggs are a really good vehicle for um, incorporating more vegetables in your diet. So that can be a great thing. Um, if it's something that's quick and on, uh, on the run, smoothies are an awesome thing. Um, when I look at different protein powders, like trying to do NSF certified protein shake or protein powders. And so um, if you're vegan or plant-based like Vega or Garden of Life um, or mm -hmm. Evolve are good options. Um, otherwise like EAS, muscle milk, momentous, um, bipro are all good protein options and throwing your favorite fruit. Um, if you do like milk, you can do skim milk or 2% milk. Um, if you're, so, la if you're like, let me stop, let yeah. me stop you right there. What, what's your thoughts on dairy? Like what's your thoughts on a lot of dairy and yogurt and stuff? Um, cause I, I went through a phase where I cut out a lot of dairy, um, cause of the inflammation yeah. and things like that. Do you have any opinion on that? Yeah. So <laughs> If you can tolerate dairy, then I'm for it just because, again, with the calcium, the vitamin D, as many athletes as I see that come in that um, 
uh, are low like in vitamin D, that's a really big source of vitamin D along with eggs. And so I'm, I'm for, um, dairy, but if you cannot tolerate it and have to take it out for inflammation, I see athletes with that all the time, like looking at a calcium fortified, um, uh, soy milk. I'll usually go to soy milk next. Milk, when you look at it per cup, has about eight grams of protein. Soy protein only has about four to five. So it's just going to be a little bit less protein. Rice and almond milk have a little bit less. But again, if you need to use like a dairy substitute for it, then you can use a different, like in your smoothie. So a lot of our guys actually really do like almond milk over here in their smoothies. So we'll use like an unsweetened almond milk and then we'll throw in fruit and then we'll just increase the protein with using a protein powder over here. Okay. Um, a really good, a smoothies are another really good vehicle for vegetables. So that's one way that I've been able to throw spinach in a lot of their shakes when we were making shakes, like was actually just throwing spinach in them. And they were so great about taking it because you couldn't even taste it. Um, oatmeal is another really good um, like option. I know I was saying that was a really good thing for like weight gain, but it's also really good for satiation. And so again, kind of on the other side of things, oatmeal is another vehicle that you can add. Um, and, and people like to do overnight oats, which are awesome also because it's mm -hmm. a quick, easy thing. If you don't want to cook eggs in the morning, you can throw your favorite, like you can throw chia seeds in there. You can throw protein powder in there. You can throw fruit, you can throw nuts. So it's another really good option to do in the morning. Um, then when we kind of go to lunch, so, um, depending on again, kind of, um, what you want. So again, kind of listening to like your hunger cues, if you know that that you haven't been able to eat, you didn't, you didn't maybe eat much for breakfast or that smoothie didn't last you very long. And you had that at seven 30 in the morning, trying to again, go around eating every two to three hours so that you're not going five or six, because then that lunch, like you're going to be so hungry. And what happens like when you usually like are really that hungry, you just become ravenous and you're going to eat mm -hmm. whatever in front of you right away, whatever sounds good versus actually kind of like listen to your body and what you want. So, um, so I always say kind of have a mid morning snack and that can be again, some of the same things that could be like an apple and peanut butter. We call them two step snacks. So having a carb with a protein or grapes and a cheese stick or, um, hummus and carrots. Um, so those would be like some good examples of a snack. And then again, kind of going into lunch, um, if you do a salad, like at lunchtime, then maybe making sure that you have some quinoa on it or, and putting again, like a, a protein source with it. And then kind of the same thing at dinner at nighttime, looking at half your plate being fruits and vegetables, and then two thirds of the other side protein and about a fistful of carbohydrates. Awesome. So it sounds like you're not a fan of the intermediate fasting or intermittent fasting. Yeah, no, just because, I mean, there's different, there's different intermittent fastings that people do. Sometimes people do like the, the 16 hours off and the eight yeah. on, or there's like an eight. So, um, not with this population, no. Um, and again, like I think in order for intermittent fasting to really like work, like working with a professional that knows how to actually like help you do it correctly, I think is the way I think people just think like, Oh, I'm not going to eat for a long, but there is like strategies that, that people can use to help it, uh, to help benefit them. All right. Awesome. Well, I think that's about it. We really want to appreciate uh, Kelsey for coming on. Hopefully listeners got a different type of podcast of a topic. That's not just football, basketball, recruiting, you know, a little different side of the football program there. So thank you so much, Kelsey. Yeah. Thank you for having me. All right, guys, remember to rate, review, subscribe, and thanks for listening to the Inside Carolina podcast.